Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a survival horror game in Unity and welcome to episode 15. In this tutorial we're going to fix a lot of bugs and glitches that we have up until this point and we'll also look at creating a bit of a flash when we get hurt and we'll also look at picking up this ammo over here. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon as well to stay up to date with the rest of this series and everything else that I have on my channel. And with that in mind, let's get these bugs fixed. So, the first one I want to address is the one for the jump scare. So, initially, we have our zombie and, yep, he comes through the door when we cross the jump scare object, which is somewhere here. I think it's this one, jump trigger. Uh, currently... The object that makes the zombie appear, if we click here, the zombie, is set as the zombie himself, not the zombie container, which should be zombie enemy. So we need to fix that bug by changing zombie001 to zombie enemy right there. The second thing I want to take a look at is this trigger right here. It's invisible at the moment, but if we select the first trigger right there, we need to go into this script and we need to change something. So the idea is once we come into this trigger, we need to deactivate it, i.e. we need to disable the box collider. Now, I think uh, we probably should have done it a while ago, but it's one of these things, as you play your game, as you test the environments and test the mechanics, you'll come across many, many different bugs, even though you don't think they seem to be bugs when you first put them in there. Eventually, because of things that happen, they can become bugs and glitches. Like, this tutorial is going to have about six or seven bug fixes. So, void on trigger enter. First thing we want to do before we do absolutely anything at all is go this dot uh, get component and in spiky brackets box collider open close bracket dot enabled equals false semicolon and save. So what will happen here is as soon as we enter this trigger, it can only ever trigger once because we turn it off as soon as we trigger it for the first time. So another glitch and bug or whatever you want to call it that I have discovered is that when we kill the zombie, he kind of still keeps moving. So what we need to do is on the zombie enemy himself and the uh, zombie death script, we need to go into there and on death, what we need to do is disable the AI component. So just above status check change, we will make it equal to two. We have this dot get component and in spiky brackets, the name of that script for us, it was zombie AI and open close bracket dot enabled equals false semicolon and save. So basically what we've done here is we've stopped the AI for the zombie happening whenever we kill it because previously it would slide across the floor, look like it was sliding across the floor. Uh, next thing we need is we need to disable the box collider on the zombie himself because uh, when we kill him, the collider will actually stay on and it means if he dies in front of the door, we can't go through this door. So we need to disable that box collider on the zombie. And uh, what we'll do is, I think we can do it in zombie death again. So same again, in zombie death, we'll have this dot get component and in spike brackets, box collider, uh, close bracket dot enabled equals false, semicolon and save. Okay, so as you can probably tell, I have sat and I've worked with this project file to notice all the bugs and glitches that we have. If you followed it exactly the same as I have, you'll probably have the same ones as me. Another one I noticed was the pistol trigger. Occasionally, it struggles to detect it and doesn't let us pick it up. To get around that, what we can do is rotate the trigger by 30 degrees on the X, or rather negative 30, and it will give us a nice the surface, I should say, that we look at to pick up the gun. So this will always allow us to pick up the gun now. Uh, another thing is two things we can actually pass right through. The firstly being the door and the second being this table. So let's take the table, go on to mesh, let's add a component and then type in col, short for collider, and we have box collider right there. And the same applies for the door. 
we just need to take the door itself and add a component and add a box collider. Now that'll stop us going through the door. So last thing, let's put our zombie behind this door again. So zombie enemy, put him behind the door, about there. And then finally, let's turn him off. So we just need to turn him off up there and save. So now let's play what we have so far without all these bugs, without all these glitches, and we'll see how we go. So generally, when you are developing, you will come to a stage like what we have done here, where we have several bugs and glitches that we need to sort. So there's the first one sorted. Gun, no problem. Uh, this one is technically a glitch, by the way, but it's something we'll deal with pretty soon. This is something that we'll deal with uh, tags and layers and all that kind of stuff. So that'll be coming pretty soon. So now our zombie should come straight to the door at us. Yep, and here he is. There we go. And now, there we go. We could walk right through that door. So you can see here, we can no longer glitch through the door. So eventually, this will be a little set of stairs and a door going to the next scene. So let's carry on with some normal development now we've sorted our bugs and glitches out. So we want to create a bit of a red flash when we get hurt. So we can achieve that by doing some more UI. So component. Uh, not component, sorry, uh, game object, UI, and we'll go with raw image. I guess you could use image if you wanted to, it's entirely up to you. Uh, I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna rename, and I'm gonna call this hurt flash. And what I'm gonna do is stretch this across the entire screen. So anchor, stretch, zero out everything so it covers the entire screen, and change the color to a nice bright red. However, I'm not going to keep it entirely red. I'm going to change the alpha to be relatively small. So in the 40s, I would say. And if we see, we can see that's the kind of image we're going to look at. So if we press play, this is the type of red that we're going to see. So we're going to make this flash when we get hit. So for now, let's disable it up here. And if I remember correctly, we go to zombie AI. And at this point in here, this is where we inflict damage. So start coroutine, inflict damage. We can insert this in here, but remember we've got to add it as a variable. So at the top, let's add in public game object. And we'll have it as the flash semicolon, obviously not the superhero. And what we need to happen is as soon as we get hit, so basically when we play the hurt sound, we need to make it flash for a split second. So after we've played the sound, we need to have the flash dot set active true semicolon and then yield return new wait for seconds. We'll wait for a minuscule amount of seconds. So it's going to be something like 0 0.1. We'll test that out. F because it's a float, close bracket, semicolon, and the flash dot set active, and it's going to be false, semicolon, and save the script. So you may want to reduce this time frame here to reflect the additional time here. It's up to you. You should probably refine this a lot more than what I'm doing because I'm just doing this to kind of show you how it's done. To get yours looking perfect and flash on perfect timing, you would refine this as you wish. So let's head back to Unity and let's go to our zombie enemy. And we just need to add in that hurt flash variable over there. So drag and drop. Let's press play and test this one out now. So we should be able to get hit by a zombie and it should flash red, i.e. we've been hurt. So let's give it a try. Yep, looks like a weapon on the table, as always. Pick the weapon up and let's get hit by our zombie. There we go. So we can see a flash of red. Again, it's all down to you to get that refinement timed perfectly. That's what development and you know, bug checking and everything comes down to. So the last thing we were going to do in this tutorial was to get our ammo picked up. And it's relatively simple. All we're going to do 
is attach this to a game object. So the game object is going to be a cube, and that's going to be the top level ammo box. So game object, 3D object cube. And let's place the cube roughly where the ammo crate is and reduce the size of the cube to re reflect the actual size of that ammo. So it's probably going to be about 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Does that look relatively decent? Yeah, that's, that should probably do the trick. The ammo box is a little bit bigger, but don't worry about that because there's no um, there's no actual collider going to be on that ammo. So, drag and drop. Uh, wherever it's gone, I've lost it. I think it's box, isn't it? So drag and drop that onto the cube so they become one whole object. And remove the... Uh, can't get my words out. Mesh renderer off that so we only see what's underneath, which is the ammo. Uh, let's rename and call it ammo box. And then finally, what we need to do is create that script which will allow us to pick up the ammo. So basically what we're going to do here is just go into it and it's going to disappear. But it'll lead us nicely on to the next tutorial. So right click, create C Sharp script. And we'll call this ammo pickup. Now, obviously, there's going to be a lot more than what we're going to do to this ammo pickup because next tutorial we're going to have all the mechanics of it. But for now, all we need to do is get rid of uh, anything that's in the class because we're going to start fresh. And we'll have public. Uh, in fact, do we even really need that? We'll start with the actual uh, method. So void on trigger enter doesn't need to be private. That's completely fine. So we'll have this dot set. In fact, do you know what? We've probably just put set. In fact, you know what? I'm uh, being a bit silly here. Game object. I really can't type, can I? Dot set active false semicolon and save. So what we've done here, top and bottom of it, is as soon as we trigger, as soon as we enter it, it disappears. And although it disappears, it doesn't, well, it does technically disappear from the scene. However, we just need to do a little more scripting to actually get it to work correctly. So let's just check if this actually works nicely. We'll walk into it. Oh, schoolboy error, guys. I've done it once again. I've not ticked his trigger. That would help a lot. So I'm hoping, I'm actually hoping something different happens now. We'll just see what happens here. So, fingers crossed, walk over, and it's deciding it doesn't want to work. Okay, so this is a classic example. So what we'll do, we'll do it a silly way, we'll do it a ridiculous way. We'll go public game object the ammo semicolon, and then we'll have the ammo dot set active false and then do you know what what have i done guys please leave a dislike for this leave I, I heard you to leave a dislike for what i've just done i have literally not attached the script to the object i'm supposed to be a professional here guys <laughs> okay so now we can test it so third time lucky eh third time lucky my incompetence gets the better of me sometimes. And there we go. So it's disappeared. So we theoretically picked up that ammo. So next tutorial, we're going to create the mechanics for it. We're going to create the UI for it. So we're going to allow ourselves to only be able to fire the gun when we have ammo. So if we don't have ammo, we can't fire it. Uh, and we might also look at reflection probes as well, because I think it's time to start making things look a little better than what they currently are. So until that next tutorial, guys, I thank you very much for watching.